participants and the dignitaries uh, to be patient with us our speaker has joined us and uh, it's uh, my pleasure and uh, my bestowed welcome to the speaker uh, dr gaurav divedi is with us thank you very much sir for your esteemed presence in this uh, dp of university of lucknow as uh, we know uh, let me give you a brief introduction of dr gaurav divedi dr gaurav divedi has completed his btech in me mechanical engineering from ikg ptu jalandhar mtech in energy systems from iot roorkee and phd in the field of renewable energy biofuel from iot roorkee india he has 8 years of teaching experience in the field of mechanical and energy engineering and taught various subjects like ic engines thermodynamics fluid machinery bioenergy and other set various institutes like vit university vellore and mit university noida currently he is positioned and working as assistant professor in the energy center at maulana azad national institute of technology bhopal india his area of interest is biodiesel production methodology enhancement in fuel properties and application of biofuel on engine operation uh, he has published more than 100 paper in various index journal he has published one book with international publisher along with that he has contributed five book chapters he has got young scientist award at nit trichy for his contribution in the field of renewable energy he is an active member of institution of engineers of india of and solar energy society and i triple e he is the guest editor of materials today proceedings of elsewhere and general of traffic and transportation recently he featured in top 2% scientist of the world from india by a survey conducted by stanford university so it's a very encouraging prospect for the fdp to have such a eminent speaker like dr gaurav priyadi with us sir i welcome you on behalf of lucknow university and all the dignitaries prevalent over here so it's my privilege to have you here now i am transferring the host rights to you sir so you can share your presentation with the dignitaries and the participants it's a warm welcome to have you on our side and you can go on with your talk in the fdp sir very warm welcome to have you on our side Good morning to all of you. Sir, I am Mr. Host, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you. Good morning to all of you. Uh, is the PPT visible? Yes, sir. Quite visible. Sir. It is visible. Okay. And uh, first, uh, I would like to thank the Lucknow University. and the host dr neelam kimishra and the other coordinator of the workshop of this uh, uh, modern innovation and development in renewable energy technologies for organizing this uh, workshop so this session uh, we are uh, going to discuss about the the topic uh, is given to me that basic understanding of bioenergy everyone know about the bioenergy but uh, we will go somewhat in depth of the what are the problems challenges and uh, issues we are facing in the area of biofuel so we are going to discuss that what are the quality aspects of the biofuel uh, before moving to that first uh, we will understand why we are in need of some alternative source of energy or bioenergy uh, what is what is the prominent uses what are the challenges we are going to some overview of that actually we are visualizing the uh, things in this uh, specific scenario scenario what we are imagining for future we we want a better future better living condition Uh, the 24/7 electricity supply, water supply, house to everyone, education to everyone. So for th for that scenario, we have to plan, and we know that no scenario can be converted into reality without proper planning. So we need to view in future with proper planning. So we have to promote specific policy. If you're talking about the energy sector in the area of solar. we are drastically improving we are using every space in your neighborhood you are saying that uh, we are utilizing every space for putting the solar panel on the rooftop on the the uh, the river bed and the side of the lakes barren land we are putting all the solar panels there 
so we can generate maximum power so this is the type of promoting specific policy like a, we are promoting in the area of solar energy we can promote this specific policy in the other area we are uh, uh, doing that also we are going to discuss those things also and investment decision for the long run is the investment feasible if we are in, uh, if we are putting large amount of money in the area of the this fossil fuel then it will not be sustainable for a longer period of time so we have to take the investmental decision for the longer period of time properly and exploring the compatibility is the sustainable energy scenario is uh, compatible to our living condition or not so scenario is a complex word we have to pre- frame some rules we have to visualize the starting condition and one of the most important thing in my class also in my every a uh, lecture i always point out that we have to see how we are going to address our population issue because if you are building large number of power plant large number of this uh, bioenergy devices bio application devices or large number of vehicles but if your population is growing exponentially then it will not meet your demand so that is the one challenge which we are facing we have to think about that also now if you talk about the history in 1919 30% of wood energy needs uh, wood energy was made by the wood so at that time what the wood was the major fuel when we move towards the 1950 the oil become the prominent uh, source of energy especially way after the discovery in the venezuela usa and in 1974 IEA found international energy agency was found after that in year 2000 the nuclear became the prominent source of the energy in the area of europe and japan in year 2018 china became the economic superpower and the reason behind that is coal so if you go through the data we will find out that in 1919 the population was 2 billion in 2018 19 it was more than 7 billion but the energy demand also increased by 20 times if you talk about the coming future solar pv will be the most uh, dominant source of the energy by year 2040 after that gas coal wind hydro and nuclear will also play their role now for better future we the conference of parties held and they have identified some global goals these goal uh, these global goals are known as the sustainable development goals and uh, the sustainable development goals out of these all are important but as a energy enthusiastic person or a person working in the area research area of the energy the affordable and clean energy the seventh point the affordable and clean energy is uh, available to everyone whether it is from developing country developed country or under developed country so that is our one main challenge to address the this issue of affordable and clean energy so by year 2030 it ensures universal access to affordable reliable and modern energy services the sustainable development goals uh, points are by 2030 increase the substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix if you go through the data of the india's energy sector also we are promoting more renewable energy uh, sectors as compared to other sector uh, i will give you the examples of the like we are uh, promoting the policy in the area of the solar energy yesterday only government has uh, giving the uh, pli scheme benefit to the wind energy sector which benefits the company like inox wind and the sozolon so we are promoting the specific policy in the area of bioenergy we are promoting the sugar industries and we are motivating them to produce the ethanol we are going to address the ethanol in coming slide by 2030 double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency and by 2030 enhance the international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology including renewable energy energy efficiency advanced and cleaner fossil fuel technology and promote investment in 
energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. So, if you go by this data, we will find out that that uh, the international cooperation is very important in the area of the clean energy. India has started the Solar Alliance mission in which uh, various countries are uh, taking part and uh, promoting the uh, specific in the area of the specific problem uh, or addressing the problem and challenges in the area of solar energy. Uh, then we we have also collaboration with our neighboring countries like Nepal, Bhutan to develop the large hydro and small hydropower sectors in their countries and uh, at the and share the power purchase agreement between the two countries. So these type of international cooperation on the construction phase, we are building dam in the Afghanistan also. So these okay. are our policy in the area of energy sector. If you talk about the research, we will, if you go to the site of the SERB or DST, you will find out that large number of scheme like Indo-US, Indo-Australia, Indo-Japan. So there are various collaboration with various country in the area of the energy sector regarding the research project. There, there, there should be some uh, researcher from their country and from some from our country, they will work in the group and uh, address the some challenges or problem in the area of the renewable energy. So these type of uh, methodologies we are using to address the these challenges and enhance the international cooperation. By 2030, expand the infrastructure and upgrade technology for supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in developing country, in particular least developed countries, small island developing state and landlocked developing countries in accordance with their respective program of support. Uh, the expanding infrastructure means that we are working on the, uh, if you people are, uh, if you've gone through the budget, you have also the government is promoting the, this electric vehicle, the manufacturer, the industry, the industry which are working in those areas that uh, led us in lithium ion, all the battery companies are promoted with, this, uh, uh, with various schemes so that they produce the electric vehicle so we can replace the conventional vehicle. So these are the infrastructure upgrade technology we are going to uh, say, see by see the changes in coming two, three years. Then what are the targets? India has placed some uh, self uh, target. These are known as INDC target. India plan to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level. Then 40 percent cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuel based energy sources by 2030, a jump of 33 percent over non-fossil fuel capacity of 2015 to create additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion of CO2 equivalent through additional forest and tree cover by 2030. So we are going to uh, uh, plant more trees and for, uh, in the uh, in in our country so that the cover of the forest increases. USD 2.5 trillion required for meeting India's climate change action between now and 2030. So for all these programs, India require large amount of money. This is about 2.5 trillion dollar. So to meet the climate change need. These are the India's ambitious renewable energy go solar and wind energy will increase from 4060 megawatt and 23.76 gigawatt from 2015 level to 100 gigawatt to 60 gigawatt by 2022. Uh, we are working uh, in this direction and we are going to achieve it. We are within this, uh, we, we will achieve this goal by year 2022. Also, the, the task is that increase the biomass installed capacity to 10 gigawatt by 2022 from current capacity of 4.4 gigawatt. Then a special program to promote a small and mini hydro project. Actually, the issue is that the uh, government of India is not promoting the large hydro power project. There are various issues associated with the large hydro project. These are related to the uh, ecological and environmental condition of that particular area. Recently, you have uh, seen the news of the cloud burst in the area of the Uttarakhand where entire dam washes away, large number of people died due to that. We cannot say they, uh, it, it is due to the natural calamity. There are some, uh, uh, we can say there, there are some uh, role which uh, as a uh, humankind uh, or as a 
people we are also hurting the environment in a larger way so government has not promoting the these large hydropower power plant as much way as a small hydropower plant a small hydropower plant are far better than large hydropower plant in terms of this uh, um, okay, this equation of environment and ecology they do not disturb the environment ecology they do not block the directly block the pathway of the waterways and they as uh, it is uh, it, it is not very cumbersome to install the small hydropower plant uh, how we are going to classify it in india the small power, power small hydropower plants uh, capacity is less than 25 megawatt so the power plant which have less than 25 megawatt are classified as uh, shp small hydropower so government is promoting the small hydropower plant and mini hydro power project water mills so some of there are remote area which which are not connected to the grid they can be uh, there there can be we develop the small hydropower plant and uh, uh, runs the power supply there so they are connected to the our uh, this uh, uh, various part of country through the uh, electricity through internet and through other devices so this is very important for the rural area especially in the area of the hilly region of himachal uttarakhand and the north east uh, we have large potential there when we come to the nuclear energy nuclear energy will be promoted from the current capacity of 5780 megawatt to 63 gigawatt installed capacity by year 2032 and uh, nuclear is also become a prominent source in kundakulam nuclear power plant we have started we are also building the large ultra nuclear power project so nuclear is, as a country as a country our population is size is big so we we cannot focus on only uh, one sector of energy we are uh, we have to invest in all sector of energy which are feasible for our country and we have to increase the capacity in all areas we are one of the we got the one of the largest coal reserve but the quality of the coal is not uh, uh, enough to meet the standard of our thermal power plant so what we have to do we have to import from the indonesia new zealand the coal so what government is proposing that to develop the clean coal technology by promoting the increasing the efficiency standard and also upgrading the thermal stations so it improves the energy efficiency and we can use our our own coal reserve for our energy production uh, to meet our target so these are some ambitious renewable energy goal now if you talk about the bioenergy bioenergy is the biggest contributor of renewable energy source accounting for about 12 percent of total and when we talk about the biofuel biofuel is the largest contributor in renewable transport sector with around 2.8 percent of the total so biofuel will in coming years biofuel will, the percentage of biofuel will go up to 10 percent by year 2035 so why we are talking about the biofuel actually the crude oil which are uh, which we are using currently the domestic production of the crude oil you can see the red line uh, it is in the it is it is a straight line uh, and not a upward trend but when we see the import the import is increasing every year every financial year the import value uh, of this uh, crude oil is increasing and the uh, crude supply depend upon these uh, OPEC countries, mainly the Saudi Arabia, UAE, Gulf countries. And then there are, uh, uh, we are also importing from the Iran, USA. Uh, now the issue is that uh, there are uh, what, uh, political problem which, uh, which are Iran and USA are facing. And due to that, we are facing the issue of the supply of the crude oil. So, we are dependent on some other countries and we are paying in terms of dollar so we are uh, it, 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 it is costing heavily to our economy so what we have to do we have to find some alternative so our dependence on those countries should not be there for long we have to some develop some alternative sources that's why we are uh, talking about the bioenergy and biofuel so what government has done, government has framed the policy 
and the policy is the national biofuel policy. An indicative target of 20% blending of ethanol in petrol and 5% blending of biodiesel in diesel is proposed by 2030. Now the target has revised by next year, five uh, by next two years, five to ten percent blending of ethanol is going to take place. You will find out that petrol stations will have a pet, uh, petrol blended with ethanol in uh, by the next year only, because government is promoting large uh, large amount of scale, large number of schemes in the area uh, towards the sugar industry so that sugar industry can produce ethanol. Second, with the thrust on the advanced biofuel, the policy indicate a viability gap funding scheme for second generation ethanol biorefinery of rupees 5,000 crore in six years in addition to additional tax incentive. Additional tax incentive are given to the refineries higher purchase price as compared to first generation biofuels. Then we have to categorize the biofuel sources. That is very important. With that should be the first generation biofuel, bioethanol, biodiesel, advanced biofuel, second generation biofuel. And then ethanol drop in fuel, then we have a algae based biofuel. Then other than we have to, uh, we have to address the issue of the raw material. They increase the scope of raw material for ethanol procurement by encouraging the molasses from sugar cane juices, other sugar containing crops, damaged crops such as surplus food grains, which are rotten and can be used for production of ethanol. Then other that we have to develop a national biomass repository by conducting appraisal of biomass across the country. Biodiesel production to be encouraged from non edible oil seeds, used cooking oil, short gestation crops and development of supply chain mechanism. Thrust on the research development and demonstration in the field of biofuel feedstock production advanced conversion technologies from identified feedstocks, setting up of National Biofuel Coordination Committee under Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Working Group on Biofuel. So these are some silent features of the biofuel policy. Now, what India is doing in the field of the ethanol? In uh, ethanol blending, India is rupees 50,000 crore back to cut the dependence on foreign oil. That's what I am talking about, that we are finding some uh, alternative source which is available on the ground, not only in the our research lab that some people are developing the fuel which uh, which uh, which have very good emission and engine uh, engine performance properties. We are not discussing about the lab infrastructure or lab project. We are developing about the fuel which is available on the ground in its uh, April 2021 newsletter. Biofuel International highlighted how India's ethanol blending had touched the record level of 7.2% in the first four months of 2021. Ethanol is a byproduct of sugar mill and used to blend with petrol. This is not only makes petrol more environment friendly, but it substantially reduces the India's dependence on crude import. For a long time, India was conservative about ethanol blending since sugar was politically sensitive. With, with global glut of sugar and India producing huge surplus export is one option. We have large number of sugar industry in the area of the Western UP and the Maharashtra. We are one of the largest producer of the sugar cane crops around the world. But that has to subsidize and has to be the cost. The other option is to boost ethanol blending in petrol. India has set a target of 10% ethanol blending by 2022. So India has uh, pre pawned the target of 5% uh, moving from 5% to 10% blending of ethanol by year 2022. And it appears to be on the target for that. So we are working very hard and uh, we are going to achieve that. However, the biggest move is coming from the recent design to advance the target date for 20% ethanol blending. This was first set for 2030 and then was advanced to 2025 and now it is advanced further to year 2023. So in coming one or two years, you are going to see the drop in the prices of the uh, petrol because it is, will be blended with ethanol. So there will be reduction in the prices that implies the huge revenue and profit opportunity for sugar stocks which could roll out in the next one year it will benefit large number of the sugar industry and ethanol production uh, producing industry even our oil company like bpcl ongc they are also working in the area of the 
ethanol production. Why? It, there are some reasons why ethanol blending is a big story. Ethanol blending is going to be a big story to sugar manufacturer and also for the shape of the macro economy. It is estimated that ethanol production will facilitate the diversion of excess sugar cane and sugar to ethanol and help sugar mill to deal with surplus stocks. Not only farmer will get their outstanding view, but also a better price due to higher yield on the ethanol. Only when the sugar is the only product, then farmer also facing the issue of the this uh, the amount we, it it is stuck between the sugar mills and the farmer. Sometimes the government is also there to facilitate the uh, the diversion of money from the sugar mills to the farmer, but. When there is another product developed like ethanol, it will have not only the farmer, it also helps the sugar, oh, uh, sugar industry. So that will be very much helpful for everyone. At a macro level, India currently depends on the import of 85% of oil milk, boosting ethanol blending from the current 7% to 2% in next two years can substantially reduce the crude import dependence and improve trade deficit. So, uh, we do not have to import large amount of crude oil due to increase in the consumption of the ethanol. And what will be the profit impact of ethanol being crystal estimated the combination of higher sugar export and higher ethanol blending could boost sugar operating margin by 100 basis point to 14 percent. The procurement price of ethanol has been a continuous rise due to the fact that it also a matter of national priority and sugar mill will Benefit from the ethanol volume and realization for financial year 21, the ethanol procurement sources from molasses and sugar cane juices was 5 to 6 percent year on year on average. In the current sugar season, it is estimated that 20 lakh tons of sugar production and will be diverted to ethanol manufacturer. This will help the keep the ethanol prices stable and curtail glut of sugar stock. Ethanol incentives are set to continue. The dip in the Brazil year's sugar production is expected to keep the prices of sugar and ethanol elevated. Globally, that is good news for sugar manufacturer that ensures healthy profit margin on ethanol blending. India's ethanol production is 2% of the global ethanol production, while its shares of global sugar output is 17%. So there is a large potential in the area of the ethanol production. This imbalance need to be rectified and likely to be a big opportunity for sugar company to tap in the coming quarters. India currently has ethanol capacity of 4.25 billion liter per day by year 2022 on stream capacity will touch to 5.25 billion liter per day, which will enable 10 percent blending in the fuel. However, to achieve 20 percent blending, India will need 10.50 billion liter per day, which is a tough task, but we are working in that direction. So this uh, this fuel ethanol is going to come on the road with blend in blended form with petrol in coming uh, six months or one year time. Now when we talk about the biofuel, some people are saying why we cannot use the vegetable oil for biofuel production. Now vegetable oil uh, vegetable oil are used for the food purposes in our kitchens. So the domestic production is going down while import of the vegetable oil is going up. We are not able to meet our demand through our domestic production. We are importing the vegetable oil from the other country to meet our food demand. So when we are importing this oil for food purpose, how can we divert it for a fuel purposes. So it is uh, this is not recommended because it will create the food versus fuel crisis. So we have to classify what are the sources which we are going to as a biofuel sources uh, in India. We have to categorize it edible oil and non edible oil. Edible oil we have a canola, cotton seed, rape seed, soya bean and this coconut oil. All these oils are used for food purposes and uh, uh, we cannot divert it for a uh, biofuel production, but only for research purpose we can use it. This uh, edible oil as a biofuel production for result and analysis purpose for comparison purposes, but not as a actual fuel. 
while non edible oils which include the mahua neem jatropha and pongami mahua and neem these two oils have some medicinal uses so they are used uh, by the pharma industry for the medicinal uses now we are remain with the jatropha and pongami and other uh, algae based food jatropha is the number one non edible oil biofuel crop in india while pongami is rank number 2 now how we are going to analyze this uh, all these oils can be used as a biofuel or not so what we have done we have categorized the oil edible oil which are used for food purpose we here we are using only for comparison purpose not as a actual fuel non edible oil which we are going uh, going to use as a fuel source when you want to develop or replace any conventional fuel so what we have to do you have to take your fuel your uh, sample fuel sample a sample b and compare that sample with the current fuel that is the petrol or diesel so here what we have done uh, we have compared the properties of edible and non edible oil with petroleum diesel and the most important property which we here see is the viscosity the viscosity of the edible as well as non edible oil is in double digit while the petroleum diesel is it in single digit 1.3 and 2 4.1 so higher viscosity means the, the the there will be difficulty in the fuel flow problem so when there is a problem in the fuel flow it affects the it affect our uh, engine operation engine will not run properly that is the one big issue that we will that we are facing so we what we have to do we have to bring down the viscosity to the level of the, this uh, uh, to meet our standard so that is the one issue then other property one is the cloud point and pore point these cloud point and pore point are known as cold flow property cold flow property how our fuel behaves in cold climatic condition in india is a big country we have a large number of weather variation throughout our country in the northern part in the eastern part we are facing severe winter so when the fuel is used for whole country or for particular zone we have to address this issue also so cloud point and pore point how will fuel behaves in the cold climatic condition now all the non edible oils have higher value of cloud point so what happens if you take the mahua neem or jatropha it will freezes at 13 degree 22 degree 16 degree 23 degree so it will be very difficult to operate at a 10 degree temperature or 8 degree temperature because this fuel will uh, start freezing together and uh, the pouring ability is also poor so they, these oil are directly not recommended as a fuel source in a cold climatic condition so these are the problem one is the cloud point and other is the viscosity other than that there is a one other issue which is the oxidation stability we are going to discuss that also now all the edible and not edible oils are made up of various type of fatty acids because they are obtained from the nature so uh, various type of fatty acids are present in the oil these fatty acids may be saturated unsaturated so we are going to classify water saturated and unsaturated if you see this table this is the bonding position if there is no bond 12 0 14 0 there is no bond these type of fatty acids are known as a saturated fatty acids now if there is a one bond it is known as a unsaturated and bond is one so it is known as a mono unsaturated fatty acid if bond is two it is known as a di unsaturated if bond is three it is known as a poly unsaturated so all the oils are made up of various type of fatty acids and fatty acids are classified into two category saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids the percentage 
of the fatty acids describe the behavior of the oil in terms of its properties, in terms of its performance, in terms of its emission for engine operation. Now, there are certain factors. One is the oxidation stability index. Oxidation stability index is determined by there are two positions. One is APE and other is BAP. AP is the alkylic position equivalent. It consists of methylene group attached to the vinyl group and it basically describes the behavior of the oil in terms of the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Similarly, these are the formula given for the AP and BAP. And you can see C18 is to 1 means there is an unsaturated fatty acid and it is monounsaturated, diunsaturated and polyunsaturated. So all these percentage of unsaturated fatty acid present in the oil will give the value of AP similarly for BAP and from this value of AP and BAP we are going to measure the oxidation stability index. Now there are fatty acid like oleic, linoleic, linoleic we have a AP2, BAP0, 2, 1, 2, 2. How this AP and BAP affect our oxidation stability? We are going to uh, see in this table. What is first we have to understand what is mean by oxidation stability? We obtain all the biofuels from the nature. So they are very oxidative in nature. They are natural source of oil. So they start reacting when they are uh, put in the open air exposure to sunlight so they start reacting then when they start reacting then there will be a gum formation the viscosity increases and when the viscosity increases after some period of time they are not be able in, they are not available in certain condition that uh, in particular condition that they can be used as direct source of uh, for fuel operation for an Indian fuel application. So we have to address this issue that the gum formation should not be there. Gum formation or this, uh, this stability issue is given, uh, is addressed by the oxidation stability index. And it, it, uh, it is measured in terms of hour. Actually one hour means one month. So if you talk about the edible oil like canola, it is two point hour, it is more than two months. Similarly, for castor, 3.63 more than 3 months, cotton seed, 1.4 month. So, for Jatropa, 2 months, Karanja, 2 months. So, these are stable for 2 months or 3 months on the basis of the hour. But as per the standard, the minimum criteria is 8 hour. So, that fuel should be stable for at least 8 months for uh, application period uh, because they have to produce it, then they have to transport it, it will come to petrol station, then it will be used in the vehicle. So the fuel should be stable up to uh, more than 8 hours. And if you see this table, you will not find out the single source of all the oil is meeting that standard. So other than stable uh, viscosity, cold flow property, the third issue which we are going to address is the stability issue. Now. As the value of the double bond or BAP increases, the oxidation stability decreases. So it means more number of unsaturated fatty acids are present, it means the stability going to decrease. So when we talk about the percentage saturated fatty acid and percentage unsaturated fatty acid, we have put in the stability and cold flow property in the same table. And you can see as the percentage of unsaturated fatty acids and uh, percentage saturated fatty acids changes, the cloud point and oxidation stability behavior also changes. One thing is important that maximum of the non edible oil sources are not meeting the standard, whether they are of cold flow property, cold flow property or cold flow problem uh, when we are addressing. The cold flow property does not have any particular standard that uh, cloud point should be below this or cold point should be below this. There is not particular standard. Uh, so what we have to do on the basis of the climatic condition, 
we have to address this issue that uh, how the oil behaves or fuel behaves in particular uh, pro climatic condition now if the fuel is a uh, which we are using in the area of the delhi up region at 20 30 40 degree centigrade that fuel is not recommended in the area of the siachen glacier where uh, temperature is in minus so that is the one aspect which we are going to see how our fuel behaves in the cold climatic condition we have to address this issue and how our fuel is stable for longer period of time that issue is the, uh, we have to address by the oxidation stability so other than oxidation stability we have a thermal stability and storage stability thermal stability means under high temperature oxidation reaction become faster which increases the weight of the oil and fats so we have to see how our fuel behaves under the high temperature con uh, condition when the temperature increases and the storage stability it may be affected by interaction with the contaminants light factor causing sediment formation changes in color other changes that reduce the clarity of the fuel and increases the viscosity so these are other visc uh, stability which we are going to address what are the parameter required to measure the oxidation stability or we can simply set the stability one is the acid value ffa content free fatty acid conduction uh, induction period then uh, we have a viscosity flash point cloud point pore point sponification value these are the parameter which we are going to measure now what is the effect of poor oxidation stability what will the effect on the our yeah this uh, uh, engine problem what will be happen to the engine when uh, the, we use the oil which have a poor oxidation stability the viscosity increases acidity also increases peroxide value increases gum formation will be there and what will it lead to it will lead to the damage to the fuel delivery system and engine transmission so ultimately what will happen it will affect the filter plugging injector choking corrosion hardening of rubber component fusion of moving component and it also affect the engine deposits so all this due to the poor oxidation stability because the oil is not stable or fuel is not stable so it will affect the all parameter gum formation will be there so proper fuel supply will not be there so it will lead to the smoke emission it will not lead to proper combustion so it will ultimately affect the damage the engine parts and ultimately the engine operation now i have gone through the literature review done by the various researcher and uh, find out that, uh, what is the uh, what they have done in the area of the oxidation ability how we are going to improve it there are different type of biodiesel stability i have already told you like oxidation storage and thermal and they play a key role in making the fuel unstable all fats and oil are prone to oxidation and rapidity of oxidation depend upon the degree of unsaturation like means unsaturated means unsaturated fatty acid the presence of antioxidants and prior storage condition sabudin at all differences in oxidation stability due to differences are due to in the various percentage of saturated fatty acid in the biodiesel or we can see they say ha, the as the number of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid changes it also affects the stability of that particular fuel how we are going to address the issue of the stability so address uh, we are going to use the use of different antioxidants these antioxidants uh, like uh, tert butyl hydroxytoluene bha pyrogallol propyl gallate tert butyl hydroxyquinine out of pyrogallol is one of the most recommended uh, to improve the oxidation stability The oxidation stability of biodiesel from nitrile has been found to be more than biodiesel due to the presence of natural antioxidants. Other than these chemical oxidants, natural oxidants can also be used. We can develop other type of oxid uh, oxidant which are bio-based uh, oxidant which we do not have to purchase. 
So these type of antioxidant can improve the stability and difference is coloring colorimetry used to characterize the physical property of oil and oxidation stability of the biodiesel. So here I have told you that uh, with the help of the pyrogallon, we are going to improve the oxidation stability. Various authors have done the research and uh, find out that it meets the necessary standard. So these are some literature view. I will send you the PPT. You can go on through the you go through it and you will find out that very interesting work done by various authors in this particular area. Now, if from uh, stability we move to the other area that is the cold flow property. Cold flow property is uh, is classified if not only by single parameter. There are various parameter, three parameter. Here three are given there. They are more than three parameter up to six parameters, seven parameters are there. If we go into the depth of the cold flow problem, there are various parameters. But these are some important parameters. You everyone in a life have faced this problem of cold flow during the winter season. A few years back. Five year or ten year back, when you visualize the thing, it will be very difficult for the uh, vehicle to operate in a winter season, especially in the northern part of the India when the winter at its peak. It is it will be very difficult, and uh, in the conventional fuel, we have to do uh, various type of jugad to operate the vehicle in the this uh, uh, winter season. So when you are replacing conventional fuel with some biofuel, the cold flow problem will come into the picture in a major way because all these uh, oils are made up of fatty acids and fatty acids affect their uh, cold flow property also. So cloud point, cloud point is a temperature where crystal first appears. Cold filter plugging point is the lowest operating temperature at which vehicle will operate, and pore point is the lowest temperature where fuel starts to flow. So these are some parameters. Cloud point is the abbreviated as CP, pore point is PP, other than CFPP is, uh, and then we have LTFT, wax appearance points, pore soap filtrability, and there are various stuff matter to evaluate this property. Now, how the mechanism of cold flow in diesel fuel and biodiesel works, the methodology is same. There is no uh, difference in the mechanism. Nucleus, they are nuclei of the fuel particles are due to the lower temperature. They start to grow and begin to adhere to one another, they start to sticking to one another. Visible crystal points appear and when there is a visible crystallization, that temperature is known as a cloud point. When the more wax precipitate as the temperature decreases, it forms a honeycomb type of structure. When there is a honeycomb type of structure, that temperature is known as core point. And when, it, when the honeycomb structure is formed, it will be very difficult to for the fuel to operate because it will be very difficult to pour in that condition. Now, various researchers have worked, uh, also work in this particular area and they have also found how the cold flow property affects the fuel. So biodiesel was taken and the cold flow properties were analyzed. The biodiesel causes plugging and gumming of fuel filter line and injector. Then we have a used various biofuels like soybean, rapeseed, cotton seed, palm oil, zetropa oil. And the starting problems due to the use of biodiesel in cold climatic condition was observed. Driving problem due to the use of biodiesel in cold condition. Canola oil, use of canola oil, biodiesel lead to plugging of fuel line and filter line. Some have used the 
peanut biodiesel peanut biodiesel cause plugging and gumming of filter and wax formation then biodiesel causes fuel starvation and operation problem which ceases the fuel flow in engine biodiesel used in coal climatic creates pumping problem in engine then biodiesel from vegetable and animal origin contain highly saturated methyl ester vegetable and animal contain highly unsaturated fatty acid which improve the coal flow working condition of the engine so that is that is also another point then we some have used the waste vegetable oil waste use of waste cooking by lead to the plugging of fuel lines and filter line create problem in fuel pumping and by using of the surfactants coal flow filter uh, coal filter plugging point was reduced means coal flow property was improved tobacco oil biodiesel use of different coal flow improver are used to avoid fuel plugging then biodiesel causes solidification of fuel line in cold climatic condition so these are the various effect other than that some have used the corn oil use of oxystrin lead to the improvement in the cold flow property by reducing the wax formation biodiesel causes plugging of filter and tubes palm biodiesel castor biodiesel crystallizes of fuel particles begins at lower temperature for biodiesel fuel ceases flow then if you go through the summary you will find out that there will be a pumping issue there will be a blockage of fuel line uh, and then there are other issue that due to the cold flow issue that engine it will not run in a efficient manner so these are the issue which uh, uh, which we are saying with the help uh, we, we when we are using the biodiesel you can go through that uh, i will send you this uh, slide and you can go through that what are the various problem so what we have done this is the research work which uh, i have uh, uh, and gone through it and it, it is my own research work so Uh, we have used the various technique for improving the right. this uh, uh, for improving the cold flow property of the biodiesel so there are various methods available and we have used the winterization technique in winterization technique we have taken a sample we have weighted that sample and after measuring the weight of the particular sample we have also measured the cloud point and pore point of that particular sample in first step we have cooled the sample 0.2 degree below its pore point so when we cool the temperature below 0.2 degree below its pore point what will happen it will solidify the some portion will solidify we have after solidification we have separate the liquid fuel and solid fuel with the help of this motor and we have separated we got the liquid fuel solid fuel is there only so we have separate the solid fuel and again we measure the weight so what we have done with the help of the winterization we improve the this uh, Uh, cold flow property by removing the uh, solid particles which are first crystallizes and we get the uh, particle which are less visible so but when we are separating the solid and liquid particles with the help of this uh, uh, equipment we have to remove the some portion of the actual fuel so when we are removing the actual fuel uh, portion it is ultimately loss in the economy of the fuel so it is not very recommended so when uh, what we have done we have compare the various property of the this uh, all the fuels like here we have compare the 
property of the we have taken the pongami oil ethanol kerosene diesel kerosene is only for reference purpose it is not recommended as a fuel source diesel ethanol and pongami oil diesel currently we are using we are we want to replace this diesel with the ethanol or pongami bio diesel so the viscosity if you go through the viscosity the viscosity of pongami bio diesel is 5.76 which is comparable to that of diesel if you see the property viscosity of the pongami oil it was in double digit but with the help of process of transification we have lowered the viscosity but we are facing the pore flow issue that is cloud point and pore point the cloud point and pore point of bio diesel is high as compared to diesel so we have to bring down actually if you go through the standard you will find out the value of the cloud point and pore point of diesel in the uh, in the near about zero or in minus but what i have done i have uh, went to the petrol station and uh, measure that sample only so it comes out to be uh, 6 and 5 it means it is already adulterated so that is the one issue other than that uh, we are facing the issue of the calorific value calorific value of all the ethanol pongamia biodiesel is uh, lower as compared to diesel so that is the one other area which we uh, which we have to address that uh, how to maintain the calorific value of the alternative fuel so i am talking about the inventorization inventorization what i have done we have first measure the sample when we measure the sample firstly there was no solid mass only liquid mass was there 50 gram was liquid and we can say the yield is 100 percent cloud point was 20 and 19 so as per the uh, newly obtained sample what we have done we have uh, uh, put the sample uh, in the cloud point apparatus and uh, in the cold flow apparatus and lower the temperature below 0 0.2 degree below the pore point when we put the uh, for, for some period of time when we put the sample at that uh, level we we got some solid mass as well as liquid mass so we have separated the solid and liquid now the solid mass was 2.5 and liquid mass was 47.5 Again, we measure the cloud point and pore point. The cloud point is reduced and pore point is also reduced. That is very good for us. So we have repeated in three steps. Every time the solid portion increases, the liquid portion decreases, the cloud point improves. But as the cloud point improves, the percentage of fuels is also, uh, liquid fuels also going to decrease. So ultimately it affects the uh, in totality that we are going to get less amount of liquid fuel. So this is the chart. There is a loss of yield as the cloud point and pore point improve. As the cloud point and pore point improves, means it was uh, our uh, fuel can uh, can be more easily in the poor climatic condition, but the, there is a loss of yield. So other step, what we can do, we have done a blending with diesel diesel uh, diesel blending with pongamia uh, biodiesel and measure the cloud point and pore point so when we measure the cloud point and pore point of pure biodiesel it was 20 and 19 degree so what we have done we have started blending it with diesel and when we start blending with diesel you can find out that pb20 is near about uh, 10, uh, 11 the cloud point and pore point is near about 7 8 while diesel for six and five so as the percentage of the diesel increases in the biodiesel the cloud point improves we have done with the uh, blending with the kerosene but it is only for research purpose it cannot be recommended the it also improves the cold flow property but we cannot recommend it for longer period of time or for uh, for ongoing uh, for on ground operation so we what we have done we have tried a ternary blend also that also improves the cold flow property but again it is not recommended uh, because it is only using the kerosene and diesel we are going to replace so what we have done that is the other aspect that we can uh, more research can be done what we have done we have used the ethanol and we have blended ethanol with the pongamia biodiesel and when we blended ethanol with pungamia biodiesel and measure the fuel property first it was pb 100 2019 pb 2 
the PBE2 means ethanol is only 2%, rest is pongamia, 98% is pongamia biodiesel. So clot point improves. As the percentage of ethanol increases, and when it increases to 25%, it meted the standard of the diesel. The diesel was 6 and 5. The PB to T the cloud point and pore point are also 6 and 5. So the blending of ethanol with Pongamia biodiesel is, is very successful. Now the issue is that beyond E25, we can also do that. But the ethanol is lighter and biodiesel is heavier. So there are miscibility issue. It is not mixing property, uh, properly. So uh, more research can be uh, done in this area in the future. So uh, that uh, uh, ethanol 40 or 50 blend with uh, this Pongamia biodiesel can be done uh, so that this cold flow property can be more uh, improved in the particular direction. But PBE 25 is uh, meeting the standard of the diesel. So these are the result of the experiment. We are going to discuss that in the last. Now we have addressed the issue of the cold flow property. Now other point, how we are going to address the issue of the stability. Stability is also playing the major role. So stability issue, we have a parameter. One is the antioxidant concentration. How much amount of antioxidants we are going to pour in a sample. Then all these fuels are put in some container. These fuels are put in some container. And when these fuels are put in some container, they, the fuel start to react with the container. So what we have done, we have a taken a metal concentration. So how our fuel behave with the uh, metal concentration or how our fuel behave with the particular metal, we are going to see that also. So we are using the antioxidant to improve the stability. We are using the metal concentration to check how our fuel behaves under, uh, behaves with a particular metal under a, uh, uh, how, uh, in a certain period of time also. So we have a storage time zero to six months. So we have uh, taken the ranges from the, this uh, literature and uh, the antioxidant concentration was 100 to 500, metal concentration 0 0.5 to 2 ppm. Then storage time 0 to 6 months. So we have taken all this data and we have also studied the effect of pyrogallol, how the 100 ppm to 500 ppm dose affect the, our biodiesel. So you can see as the percentage of the pyrogallol increase in the biodiesel sample, it meted the standard. This is the EN14214 standard, which is the induction period, means uh, biodiesel is stable for eight hours, means eight months. So when the uh, percentage of pyrogallol goes beyond 300 ppm, these biodiesel are, have longer stability. Now, you can also see how our biodiesel behaves with the uh, react with the blending. If you do the blending of diesel with biodiesel and study the effect of the uh, effect of the uh, oxidation stability, induction period is also known as oxidation stability. So when we do the blending, PB2, PB2 means there is only 2% biodiesel, rest is diesel. So stability is very high. For PB5, it is also very high. Up to PB20, the stability is in meeting the standard. So when we go beyond the 20% biodiesel, means there is a 40% biodiesel, the stability going on to reduce. So it signifies that as the percentage of diesel increases, the stability also increases. So we can either replace it by using the antioxidant. If we study the viscosity graph for all the blend, PB2 means only 2% biodiesel, PB100 means 100% biodiesel. So as we go from, as the percentage of the biodiesel increases in the sample, the viscosity also increases. So some people, <coughs> after listening to the seminar, they ask me one question. 
can we use 100% biodiesel? Yes, you can 100% biodiesel, but you have to address the issue of the high viscosity. And viscosity issue can be addressed in current time. We can use it by blending. So when you come to the blending, the viscosity reduced and you can use it for engine application purpose. Similarly, as the percentage of the biodiesel increases in the sample, like PB2, only, only 2% biodiesel, PB100, 100% biodiesel, the calorific value is also going to decrease. Means you have to use large amount of money uh, in terms of fuel, a large amount of fuel for running the same distance. So that is the one issue. Flash point increases with the percentage increase in the blending ratio. FFA content. FFA content is directly related to the viscosity. Means free fatty acids are increasing, viscosity increasing as the percentage of the biodiesel increases in the particular sample. We have taken the four sample, PV20, PV40, PV60, five sample, PV60, PV80, PV100, PV100 you have already known. We have put the pyrogallol on the samples and we find out that as the percentage of the pyrogallol increases in all the samples, the induction period improves. Induction period improves uh, when the uh, pyrogallol percentage was 300 for almost all the samples. So it is recommended to use beyond 300 ppm for smooth operation in terms of the stability. So these are the things we are going to discuss that. Now, how much antioxidant, how much metal concentration and how much the storage time, we have to optimize that particular level. How we are going to address this issue? That is the one area that we have to address how much time how much antioxidant because antioxidants is also very costly so we have to see that also now antioxidants we have taken 0 to 500 ppm metal concentration 0 to 2 ppm storage time 0 to 6 months we have taken and used it in a box bacon um, uh, technique in our uh, uh, BBD approach and out of that we generate a set of experiment. So we have generated this 17 set of experiment. Metal concentration we have taken uh, iron, aluminium, zinc. We have taken three different material. So we have a three set of different experiment, three response sheet. We have taken like antioxidant is 500, metal concentration is one, storage time is six. So we have performed the uh, major stability and we got the experimental response of 7.3 hours. Now, similarly, we have performed other experiment. We got the experimental response. For aluminum and zinc, we have again performed the experiment and we got the experimental response. When we got the experimental response, we got the equation in terms of A, B and C. What are A, B and C? A is the antioxidant, B is the metal concentration and C is the storage condition. So we got the three equation of oxidation stability in terms of A, B and C and we put the value, when we put these value, we got the predicted response. So we got the experimental response as well as predicted response for all the set of experiments. We compare the actual value with the predicted value and we studied the behavior. You can see this is the oxidation stability 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, it is improving which is very good for us and you can see the antioxidant as the antioxidant concentration increases from 0 to 500 this stability also increases similarly for uh, other graph you can see the storage time has does not much effect on the oxidation stability the storage time and metal concentration does not have significant effect on the oxidation stability major role is played by the this antioxidant. You can again see for other metals also, for aluminium and zinc, as the antioxidants increase, the oxidation stability increases. So we have studied for uh, all the metals and we, what is our task? 
we want to maximize the oxidation stability to be more than 8 hours for iron aluminum and zinc because 8 hour is a, is requirement as per the given standard so we perform last set of experiment uh, and we find out the optimized set of experiment that for iron 500 ppm time is 4.33 hour metal concentration is 1.5 the biodiesel has more than 8 hour of stability <laughs> similarly for aluminum and for oh. zinc so the percentage error for all the meta, uh, all the experiment is uh, less than 2% so and we see the predicted experiment response all are more than 8 hours so we can recommend this uh, optimum condition for uh, to meet the specific standard now we are going to analyze our results for all the sample and you can see we have a pb100 that is a pongamia biodiesel 100 percent we have a pb20 pb20 means 20 percent is biodiesel rest of diesel pbe20 means pongamia biodiesel is 80 percent ethanol is 20 percent pongamia biodiesel e25 75 percent is pongamia biodiesel ethanol is 25 percent PBK20, Pongamia biodiesel is 80% and kerosene is 20% and then we have a diesel and we have our four main properties and how we want to replace the diesel. So how any of these is this particular blend are going to replace diesel, we are going to analyze that. Now if you see the proud point and poor point of uh, 20 and 19 degree it is very high as compared to 6 and 5 so pb20 pb100 is not recommended the oxidation stability is also very poor it is less than 2 and uh, 8 hour is the minimum requirement and it is it is way beyond that so we can recommend pb100 now when we move to pb20 the again the cloud point and poor point is I, the stability improves, but the cloud point and pore pipe does not meet the specific standard. Similarly for PBE20, but when we move towards the PBE25, means Pongamia biodiesel. Pongamia biodiesel is also obtained from nature. Ethanol 25 is also obtained from nature. So we have prepared the blend that is the PBE25 without any antioxidant, without any other cold flow improver, without anything. We prepare this blend PBE25. The cloud point and pore point both meets the diesel standard. It meets the value of the diesel. And the oxidation stability is also more than 8 hours. So when the oxidation stability is 14 hours, it also meets the standard of the oxidation stability. So in terms of cold flow property and oxidation stability, we can recommend PBE25 to replace the diesel as a current fuel. But again, the problem which we are facing is the calorific value. We have to address the calorific value issue. We can use the enhancer to improve the calorific value. And then we have to again check the our methodology how we are going to address this calorific value issue. Because if you go through the, if you are a student of bioenergy and uh, biofuel, if you search all the fuels, you will find out that only few fuels have higher calorific value as compared to a conventional fuel. Conventional fuels are petrol and diesel. They have the calorific value of more than 40 uh, megajoule per kg. While for all other blends and all other alternative fuels, they have a lower calorific value except hydrogen. Hydrogen has calorific value three to four times maximum more than that of conventional fuel. But uh, the issue with the hydrogen is that uh, we are not going to, we are, we are still in the, the issue of uh, storing it, how we are going to store it and use it because it is very volatile and it will lead to several problems. So that is the one issue that is the calorific value which we have to address. 
so the result of the study shows that there are some limitations associated with the use of bioethanol pbe25 as it has lower calorific value which result in higher consumption of fuel and lower brake thermal efficiency as compared to diesel the other reason associated with the use of bioethanol is its availability as a renewable fuel we have gone through the uh, several slides and we have gone through the data that government is going to uh, improve the situation of the ethanol blending we are going to procure more ethanol from the sugar industry and there will be re-rating of the sugar industry so when we talk about all these parameter but what we are getting on the ground that is the most important thing so when we when uh, till now we are not utilize uh, it on a petrol pump on uh, on any day or uh, when you went to petrol station when you find out that you will getting the petrol uh, petrol blended ethanol then you can see the changes coming in the society that this type of petrol blended ethanol uh, is uh, is going to revolutionize the transportation sector where the it lower down the dependency on the conventional sector and that is the one aspect and if you are going to use it in a larger way then we can go for more blending and as the uh, in near 5 years or 7 year time you will find out that there will be two three options we which we have uh, in a transportation sector as a fuel source or you know we can say in a bioenergy sector as a fuel source that is the ethanol blended petrol or ethanol blended diesel and then we will have also this uh, era of electric vehicles also so but for the time being we are the facing the issue of the calorific value uh, with the use of this ethanol blended uh, biodiesel so that is the one aspect which uh, research can be done now when we talk about the future scope there are various points which we can uh, Say, uh, see how the future scope uh, in this area, how the future work can be done. One is <coughs> Ongamia biodiesel should be used in neat form. That is the B hundred and its performance should be evaluated on the basis of long time in an operation. Usually, what we do as a researcher, if you find any researcher, a uh, i am including mine also what we are usually do every researcher in our society and in our country also mostly people what we do we take a we prepare a biodiesel we prepare a various blends we test it on a engine we report it in terms of engine performance and emission we publish a paper and we recommend it as a alternative fuel source whether it is a feasible or not in long terms in an operation that study is very less available very few people are working on that so that is the one major area you have to see how your fuel if it improves the engine performance emission everything it improves but how that fuel behave in a longer period of time one month to six month to one year to two year that type of study is missing in our research so that is the one area you can take any alternative fuel and you can do this type of work how the your fuel behaves in particular engine for long term engine problem and how your engine parts are also behaving on that particular fuel how the engine react to that particular fuel how the engine parts are reacting to particular fuel the effect of the b100 effect of b100 how pure biodiesel effect the injector piston ring piston cylinder smoke emission all can be studied in detail how the fuel part uh, parts should uh, are affecting Uh, by using that particular alternative fuels now you have uh, understand that uh, all the biodiesels are made up of saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids now when all these fatty acid unsaturated fatty acids uh, how they react with the fuel consumption how the fatty acid react with the fuel consumption that is the one aspect which we can study so these are the some Uh, recommendation regarding the future scope. What India is on ground doing? India's low cost 
carrier spice jet has operated the country first flight using the biofuel m27 rocket last year the spice jet deployed a bombardier q400 on the delhi dehradun route which uh, blended the air turbine fuel 75% and biofuel was 25% made from jatropha crop and developed locally by the csir and institute of petroleum the biofuel met the specific standard operate and witty and bombardier for commercial application in aircraft states and spice jet such blends could potentially reduce its carbon footprint by 15% so other than that the substituting high sulfur diesel by methanol in the locomotive niti ayog has directed indian railway to develop one dual fuel methanol locomotive rdso in association with iit kanpur are working to develop dual fuel methanol engine so these are the some work now the research opportunity uh, i am working in the ic indian and fuel lab at energy center at mani gopal we have a btech internship available in the area of the renewable energy in all field of renewable energy solar wind biomass biofuel everything and uh, then we have a mtech we have mtech two branches one is the renewable energy and other is the energy system management the admission is through the gate then we, uh, i have got a phd position available with the mhrd fellowship these are my contact details you can contact me other than that if you want to collaborate in any research work in the area of the biofuel small hydro power or solar uh, we can work together in that particular area so thank you from my side if you have any question doubt or discussion we can go through that Uh, thank you very much sir for your esteemed time and presentation with us on our request sir it's a very good uh, part on your side to have you with us in this fbp so now i request the dignitaries and participants to show any queries or questions or any sort of conversation you want to have with sir because sir is available for a little period of time with us and he has uh, really be kind on his part to try time to focus on this fdp of lucknow university so i request all the participants to if you have any conversation you can go on with it thank you very much thank you sir are there any queries or questions uh, that you want want to ask sir you can go ahead with your conversation uh, sir is available Uh, i can see no conversations in the chat box also that i can provide good morning sir so if you have any okay. good morning sir the jo biodiesel content the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids that means the role of as far as i think the role of saturated that means it will give the more carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide in the emission yes are you outside hmm If if we will convert all the unsaturated carbon dioxide to unsaturated acids, unsaturated acids or saturated acids by the chemical means, can this carbon monoxide percentage can be decreases? Uh, that is the one point which I have mentioned in the future research area. That very little research, or I can say, very few work, not in Indian perspective. in uh, in an perspective no in my knowledge no researchers have work on this particular area how the saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acids affect the emission part which you are asking so uh, i have gone through one or two paper in the uh, from australia that is the equinsland university of australia uh, in their lab they have work how the particular uh, this uh, particular fatty acid like they have taken the sample of oleic or linoleic acid and they have studied how this particular fatty acid behaves uh, in the engine as a fuel source so they have done this type of study and find out the result that the particular fatty acid like oleic or linoleic they 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 provide the good fuel properties but the issue with which we are facing as a researcher you will also face that it is very difficult to uh, get the particular fatty acid on ground and if you at least get then it will be very difficult to operate on a engine you can operate it for one time and recommend that this is very good fatty acid and it can be recommended but 
and also reduce the carbon footprint and everything but my point is is it feasible for the ground situation because we ultimately we are developing fuel for the ground operation on transport as a transport source uh, to replace the diesel is the amount of fatty acid of particular uh, source oleic linoleic palmitic is that particularly available i will give you one example if you take the algae algae is very uh, some algae are very pure and they beat the properties of the conventional fuel in all aspect but the issue is that the costing the costing is nearly 400 per liter or 500 per liter no one will go with that price by replacing with the uh, by replacing the diesel so along with the property we have to see how much the raw material and availability of that particular source is available with us so we can use it for a, as a alternative fuel source so you have to see that also without with uh, when we are uh, talking about the using of that particular fatty acids okay sir thank you sir any more questions for sir or any conversation you have you want with sir as sir is said he has available phd positions also and uh, various other research topics which he want to work upon so if you can have any sort of conversation with sir you can go ahead with your conversation as time is limited for sir sir has uh, his own work proposals also so if anyone wants to converse he can go on with the Uh, sir, looks like there are no uh, queries or conversation with the participants anymore. So it's a very blessed opportunity for us to have you with us on your FDP. Uh, looks like the participants and the delegates do not have any queries or conversations anymore. So thank you very much, sir, for your esteemed time. And it's to our privilege to be associated with you in this FDP on innovations and renewable energy because bio energy is a one of the very important topics of research. and uh, it is very much uh, uh, important aspect and integral part of renewable energy so thank you very much for your views on the uh, bio energy cell. and i think the participants will really find it encouraging to have the research prospects and the uh, prospects of various aspects of uh, bio and energy which we have discussed with bio diesel and bio thank you very much sir for your valuable time okay thank you sir thank you